This video is sponsored by Aberration. Holy sweet and spicy, frosty, icy, rolling dicey, this game looks really friggin' amazing, and I've been wanting to talk about it for a really long time. Ghostfire's first full-fledged board game is on GameFound for a super limited time now, where you do like a tower defense in the dark of Grim Hollow's world, Atheris, and have to light candles to reveal threats and gather villagers and survive till a big scary shows up like the Goldanger Doom Blimps in Bloons. If you want to play it, the GameFound campaign is the fastest and least expensive way to get it, so why the heck not smash that link instead of your neighbor's pumpkins, you hoodlums? This isn't 1979. Yeah, go check out the campaign. Back it if you can, because I want them to make more board games, and also me too. Here's another video. The best part of having a werewolf's curse, like with many curses, is that strong characters can embrace it and make it part of their identity. Like with Finn's Grass Sword or the Venom symbiote, when the curse of lycanthropy is accepted by its host, they gain more control over it. So instead of a dumb coward crybaby who runs around the woods and locks himself up during full moons, a good werewolf can tear a village to shreds with a small handful of well-planned murders. I've been playing Donner Dinner Party with some friends, which is just a mogus, a mogus, which is just mafia, which is, if you know the game from youth group or something, also called werewolf. So it got me thinking. I haven't seen this style of session done in a campaign, and I, I want to see it, so let's put up some framework and build this baby. Firstly, we need a classic small settlement of victims. You could do a group of nomad families who think a spirit is haunting them, or a little hamlet of people who only recently met each other, or a group of researchers visiting a ghost town with a guide who might be the vampire, Werewolf. or like a classic little village with someone who just got this power and really likes it. Or, if you want to have fun, make it weird and be like a bunch of little forest gnomes or something. And the one that is a werewolf just blacks out whenever he changes so nobody knows what's going on? That'd be fun. But for my example, let's do some kind of a guild outpost. Off the dome, since they gotta be isolated and we can play with motifs, let's do winemakers. Just as quickly throwing our crew together, let's do six NPCs and two player characters. An Aarakocra guard named Flurbonium. Two bugbear manual laborers named Clibclob and Jubjib. A bullywog foreman named Trumpet Sack. A gif who stomps the grapes named Homie Simplin. And a grung named Potato Chips who tends to the vineyard. Because everyone here is technically a humanoid, all of them can be werewolves. Same goes for our player characters. Let's do a kobold ranger named Grassknot and a Kuatoa named Ergablurg... Blurg. Now that I've got all my characters, I'm gonna roll a d6 to decide the first victim and a d8 to pick the werewolf. Because why the hell not, once you've got it all set up, challenge yourself with randomness. It also helps avoid Scooby-Doo tropes. In murder mysteries, it's never the first person you think of. Never, ever. I'm just gonna go ahead and spoil the run-through for you since we're all in a writer's room with me. The big hippo with jelly between his toes just happens to be our werewolf. And Trumpet Sack is his first victim. Now we do my favorite thing in the world, which is riding backwards. Let's say the GIF was a werewolf before he got his job here, and has been in hiding trying to overcome his curse. But on a full moon, during an argument with the tiny frog who screams too much, our favorite hippo homie went, as the cool kids say, a beast mode, and tore Trumpet from his sack. Let's also say that Homie Simplon has done this twice before, and had to kill everyone to avoid revealing his curse. So he's going heel turn from super nice sweet boy who stomps on grapes and drinks wine to a guy who stomps skulls and drinks blood. In his mind, for another last time. Let's say that the day after is when the party shows up. Let's make it simple and say that they're here to collect some kind of payment from the foreman or a third party bank or something. Then they get here as the rest of the crew isn't working, instead gathered around the horrific scene of frog dissection. This way the party can meet everyone and get a good look at the fresh crime scene. Now what we're gonna do here is with each character, we're dropping some red herrings as to why they do it, but make the murder scene clearly monstrous and not really tie to anybody. Flurbonium will help investigate, but gets agitated whenever he's blamed or questioned because he was drunk last night. Clibclob thinks the Bullywog deserves to die and wants to be Foreman. Jubjib is drunk most of the time and doesn't want to be bothered. 
Also, he killed someone before and has mentioned it to the others during their work time, but doesn't want to be blamed for this, so hasn't brought it up recently. Homie regrets the loss of a friend and wants to finish this season's work and leave the memory behind. And Potato Chip is just paranoid, thinking that she'll be the next to die, but has no reason to think so. A smart and annoying party would group everyone up and let nobody leave, but this cast of characters all have pretty good reasons to refuse, except for Flurbonium. So thinking as the werewolf, Hippo Man, let's make this our route. Kill Flurbonium first, since he's the most dangerous and knowledgeable. In order to do so, taking advantage of the full moon, Homie will find a way to infect Clib Clob and or Jub Jib. They'll be less self-protecting and they're good suspects for the original crime if things go bad. Then let Homie spend the rest of his time either working or packing his things to avoid suspicion. Once the bugbears kill someone or reveal themselves, likely on the following night, Homie will wait and see if the outsiders guess incorrectly and hopefully leave. If they stick around another day, he'll try and convince the party that someone else is a werewolf, which might go especially well, and this is a note that you should all take. Werewolves under pressure can create a straw man argument by spreading their curse to otherwise innocent people, and then have them tried and killed. If the party has been overly accusatory of the staff the entire time, he might instead have everyone in the vineyard suspect the party and then attack them getting the job done with only slightly dirty hands. But for my story, also playing the other side of my own checkers board, the party contrives some bullshit to pinpoint a slip up on homie's part. Let's say our drunk friend, after getting cursed, makes a good enough case to the party and they find homie's Captain Gantu sized footprints in the mud. No predator is going to fight to the death if they can help it. And if either the werewolf or the party escapes the following confrontation, the party is getting hunted by Homie Simplon until he either spreads his curse, kills the party, or his killing is finally ended by a well-placed silver bullet from his own gun, because they're the only guys in D&D with guns. It's also funny that his base race stats are just as hard to fight as the werewolf stats. But that's it. I'd love to see your guys' ideas in the comments for werewolf encounters, party members, adventures you had with werewolves, and what kind of stuff you'd like to see in the future. Seriously, I'm, I'm gonna run out of good monsters at this point. All right, I gotta go. My one true love's train is leaving the station in five minutes, and I gotta pick some really good music for my running montage. Let's do winemakers. Thank you. Love that guy. Okay, real quick, I gotta add 30 seconds to the video or YouTube's gonna slap me. But I don't talk slow or say anything like, Wow, guys! All the fucking time, or talk with the cadence of chills. So here's me drawing my character Word in Heart of Alinthi, figuring out who the werewolf was. This solves all their problems.